Hello, everybody. If you are seeing us, please write in the chat, hello. Everyone throw out a greeting for us so we know that you're here. Yeah. For those that aren't sure, I'm Bob, and this is Diana. Hi, <laughs> everyone. We're, we're, Welcome we're, to the we're, webinar. We are so grateful that you guys made time and space to join us today. Um, again, as I said, my name is Bob Minhas, and uh, we have an amazing webinar today to really talk about how you can position yourself as the expert. Hello, Sarah. Sarah, thank you for saying hello. Um, so today's webinar, what we're going to cover is we're going to start with Diana, who's going to talk about some really important concepts when it comes to uh, setting yourself up for success in your career. And then I'm going to take over and we're going to talk about how to really establish your expertise online and how to get found for it. Now, we have so much stuff that Diana and I want to give out. So if you guys don't mind, we're going to just get right into it. Uh, a yeah. little bit of housekeeping. The only couple things I want to talk about is uh, for those of you that have joined us today, try and be present. Uh, I have been guilty of this in the past. Sometimes I'll turn on a webinar and try and do something else. You're going to find that Diana and I are giving such amazing information, but to really get the most out of it and absorb it, you want to be here and you want to be present. And we will take questions first after Diana's portion and then after my portion as well. So there will be a chance uh, to do that. Feel free in the middle of our presentation if you want to throw a question in the chat. And then I will, or, my, or myself or Diana will queue it up for when we take that time for questions. We can certainly do that as well. The other component is after this webinar, we will follow up with a recording. So if you can take notes, that's awesome. I do find sometimes people prefer to be present and listen and watch. And when they take notes, they find themselves distracted. So do know that for those of you that have registered and have showed up, you will receive a recording of this entire webinar as well. And then, as I said, just be here and be present and enjoy everything we have to offer. Awesome. Awesome. Diana, is there anything you wanted to add or shall we jump right in? Yeah, I just want yeah. to say, first of all, like I've been doing a lot of webinars and this is like one of my first like co-delivering the webinar. I'm super excited to be delivering this with you, Bob. And one Thank of you. our reasons why we decided to do this is really our intention is to teach you how to position yourself for success. Mm -hmm. And whether you are looking to position yourself uh, as the ideal candidate for a job or a promotion, or you're thinking how to position yourself as a thought leader or an expert, this is the webinar for you. Um, my expertise is really in the space of how to differentiate as top talent to get amazing openings faster. And Bob is the expert to the experts. So yeah. we thought this was the perfect uh, collaboration here. So we got mm -hmm. amazing things to deliver here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dive right in to share my okay. presentation. Okay, uh, just make sure, uh, Bob, if you can let me know once I go in that you can see, that would be awesome. Okay. So let okay. me get right in there there. Okay. Hey, Tanya, thanks for joining. Thanks for saying hi. Okay. I can see the chat window, Diana. So be Perfect. assured that I'll be following the chat window as you're presenting. All right. Okay. okay. You see the you see the main slide there? I do. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Can, can everyone just chime in and make sure you can all see the main slide? Just say main slide is up. Yep. And I'm sure we'll be good. But whenever you're ready, Diana. Perfect. All right. So welcome to this webinar, how to increase your marketability, visibility, and credibility to get more opportunities. I'm your trainer, Dana Y.K. Chan. So a little bit about me. I'm a career coach, speaker, and trainer. I'm the founder at My Markability, um, where I help ambitious professionals and executives like you to gain career clarity, confidence, and a competitive edge to land amazing opportunities and make more money. I've worked with hundreds of clients internationally, get competitive job offers at top companies through the power of networking, such as top consulting firms, technology firms, financial services, and CPG firms. I have over 10 years of experience in recruiting, training, coaching, and speaking. I have a keen eye for identifying a differentiated top talent. I've seen millions of LinkedIn profiles, over 50,000 LinkedIn uh, resumes, and then thousands of interviews uh, through my work as a recruiter at Google, IV MBA and Executive MBA Missions, and uh, as an agency recruiter, right, recruiter for companies like J&J &J and AstraZeneca. I've also worked as a career advisor at Schulich uh, in uh, consulting in, at Accenture and at Talis in marketing, training, and operations as well. Uh, I've been recognized as one of the top 15 job search experts on LinkedIn. Um, so if we're not connected yet, please connect and follow me on LinkedIn at www.linkedin.com slash Diana Chan. All right, so let's dive into our uh, training here. So here's what I'm going to cover in the next uh, 20 minutes or so is how to stand out and get more opportunities, how to identify your unique value, how to develop your personal brand, how to tell your career brand story, how to network to get work, how to develop an optimized LinkedIn profile, and lastly, the Magnify Your Marketing Framework to Manage Your Career. 
All right, so how to stand out and get more opportunities. This is really that overall essence of what um, we're trying to teach here today. And I walk, want to walk you through this is that in order to attract more opportunities, you need to first increase your markability and increase your visibility and increase your credibility. So what I mean by that is you want to be markable, be seen and be recognized. And here are some of the uh, areas of what you want to look into improving to help you amplify your game and get more opportunities. So first is you want to have a strong personal brand. That is a great way to differentiate and stand out. Second is you want to have an amazing elevator pitch. I like to call it is to master your glowing introduction. Third is you want to have a remarkable resume to generate interviews. And next is a, an optimized LinkedIn profile to be found. And from the visibility front, what you want to keep in mind is that really putting yourself out there by networking either online or in person. You want to have some LinkedIn activity so that you also uh, increase your visibility, content creation, which Bob will talk more about as well, and having online engagement there. Next is the credibility. What I mean by this is that you want to be seen as a top talent. So someone who's a high performer with high potential. I know when I was recruiting at Google, my task was to recruit for the top 2% of the talent um, in the market. So position yourself as a high performer with high potential is really critical. Being identified as that go-to expert, having testimonials on, on your LinkedIn or on your website, Getting referrals is a great way to help you accelerate um, and getting opportunities as well. And lastly is having a great reputation. I have found from my experience as a recruiter, um, even though if you don't have um, all the experience for an ideal opportunity, but if you have a great brand, a great reputation, um, people referring you, it could help you um, go through that back door and get you interview opportunities and offers as well. So my message here is that to stand out, you have to be outstanding. So really being that high performer, do really good work, amazing work, deliver great value, um, be authentic the you, develop great relationships with people so that you have a strong network to think of you for opportunities. Okay, so if there's anything you know that I'm gonna present today, this is one slide I would love for you to, to keep in mind as a checklist of how you can do all these things to amplify your markability, visibility, and credibility. So moving on how to identify your unique value. So this is something new that I added because some of the, a lot of you asked, how can I sell and market myself effectively? How do I pitch myself? And it really all starts with knowing yourself uh, where you need to identify your unique value. So I'm gonna walk you through some things to consider to help you identify this. So the first is really assessing your expertise. What, what do you know in terms of your knowledge, skills, strengths, experience? Go through that assessment. The other is your track record of success. What's your performance, achievements, and results? I really want to challenge you to think about tangible um, accomplishments here. Uh, when I was a recruiter at Google, one of the key things I learned is they call avoid the fluff and give the facts. So give the facts in a way that is quantifiable and tangible that will really differentiate you from your competition. And let me tell you, this is what recruiters and employers look for. You know, a lot of you asked here, what do recruiters look for? These are things that they look for. They look for that relevant knowledge, skills, and experience and your track record of success. If you're trying to pitch yourself for speaking or consulting opportunities, you also want to have those testimonials, those results to help, the, um, to help your potential um, employer as well. So the so what here, it's really where you want to connect the dots, right? So you have all these things. The next level here, you got to connect the dots to identify like what's your unique value proposition that will give you that competitive edge. Okay, this is that so what factor. I like to call it it's like your X factor, where you really think about like what really differentiates you. The way I like to think about it and encourage you to think about it is to think like a marketer. You are the product. What makes you interesting? Why you? Right. Like this is like that million dollar question when you think about when you're trying to get opportunities, like why should someone hire you? The employer is the buyer and you are the seller. Right. So you really want to answer some of these questions on like what problems do you solve? What's your promise? What do you really deliver to the employer? So here are some things to think about, like how can you help an employer when it comes to selling yourself is you really want to sell the benefits of hiring you. So beyond just your skills and experience, you really want to think about from their objective, what are they hoping to achieve? 
So here are some things to get you thinking of what you can say in an interview or when you're pitching. These are how you can help them make more money, save money, save time, solve a specific problem, optimize processes, elevate a company's brand, build partnerships, expand the business, improve quality of service, attract and retain customers. So imagine you just saying this, like I can help your business grow, or I can help you attract more clients. How much more compelling it is to an employer when you talk about these are the results that you can help them achieve. Okay, so that's how you're really gonna differentiate. So as an example, you know, we talk about how if you look at my experience, you can talk that my features is around the strengths is I have like 10 plus years of recruiting experience. What's the benefit of that and what I do as a career coach is I can help my clients differentiate as top talent, get hired faster, and make more money. That's the benefit. Okay, so I really want to challenge you to think about that. What are the benefits of hiring you there? So next I want to walk you through is how to develop your personal brand. Okay, so first of all, let's think about what's a personal brand. Your personal brand essentially is who you are, what you're known for, and what's your unique value. Okay. That's really the essence of personal branding. Whether you think you have a brand or not, um, you do. Um, even if you don't think you're branding yourself, um, you have a reputation. So here are the steps I want to walk you through to help you strategically think about how to really amplify your brand. First is you're the product. So what are your features and benefits, which is really your strengths and the value add? The second is the potential. What's the evidence that you're a high potential talent? So this is the proof, the evidence of support to prove that you are that go-to expert or that thought leader or that top talent there, okay? This is what's really gonna make you stand up with that evidence there. Third is the perception. What's your reputation? What are you known for? Fourth is the positioning. So what's the positioning of your brand and unique value? So this is really think of the messaging, the communications of how you wanna convey uh, your brand. The next is the packaging, which is really like, what's your brand image? How do you wanna show up? How do you wanna present yourself? So I like to use analogy when I think about personal branding, it's I think of like, um, like wedding planning, right? Like if you think of an amazing wedding um, of how they have the core theme, the color, the color scheme, um, and all the key, like, you know, key things that represent like, you know, this person or the couple there, um, everything that ties in to make that personal brand there, okay? Um, so for those who know me, a lot of my friends or my clients know that my favorite, like my brand color is in the color like blue and pink. So you see that a lot in like my presentation, even in like my background videos as well. That's really part of my personal uh, brand there. So let's move on and talk about how to tell your career brand story. So this is really that elevator pitch here. So when you think about it, anytime you meet someone for the first time or you're going for an interview, there's this common question about tell me about yourself. Right? And you're probably wondering, like, what do I talk about? Do I talk about personal stuff or how far do I go? From my experience, most people are not comfortable with talking about themselves. And most people uh, tend to just talk about their career history. So I want to walk you through my six P's formula to show you how you can tell your story in a way that is interesting, inspiring and impressive. So step one is you want to share your passion and potential. So this is really the who you are piece. Like, what do you care about? What are you known for? Like, what are you really great at? That really sets the stage of um, the area of like, what is it that you truly care about and want, and want to do more of as well? So for me, I'm really passionate about helping people achieve greatness, success, and fulfillment. That's part of my brand there. And I'm known for um, connecting with people and differentiate, differentiating people as top talent. Step two is you wanna share your past experience and proud accomplishments. You, know, you can just keep it to one or two proud accomplishments here. This is the credibility piece, right? By summarizing your years experience, the type of industry expertise you have, um, the knowledge area, the functional areas, um, and the type of projects you worked on, it really will help you uh, raise your credibility there. By sharing a proud accomplishment, essentially is that proof, the example to showcase um, what matters to you. Right? Like what type of skills that you enjoy using as well. Lastly, step three is to share your present situation and purpose. So once you talk about your past, you want to bring it back to the present state. So where are you now in your life and career? What are you interested in? What are your goals or aspirations? What do you want more of? 
What are you looking for? Um, by telling that, it will help people paint a picture to think of either an opportunity or someone for them to refer you to based on what you're sharing, what you're interested in uh, achieving more. And the purpose is really that motivation, it's the why. You really wanna give, give a sense of why, of why do you wanna say make this pivot or change in your career? Why do you want to do, like, do more speaking, for example? Why do you wanna target this company? Why are you interested in this kind of role? By giving that insight, it will help understand, um, help people understand what really motivates and drives you there. Okay, so I wanna challenge you um, to write out your elevator pitch. Keep it to only about two minutes long. It's usually about 260 to 300 words um, uh, for your uh, uh, elevator pitch there, okay? So let's move on now. How to network to get work. Now, you've probably heard a stat that at least 70% of the jobs are found through networking. From my experience as a career coach, I work with hundreds of uh, professionals now. I've only had a handful of clients who actually found jobs through applying online. And the rest is through either networking or referrals. I actually have a whole presentation about networking that I can talk about. It's one of my favorite topics. However, today, I wanna give you what I call the guiding principles to help you get started of how to network effectively. So my first principle here is to practice positive networking. So what do I mean by this? Is to build connections, trust, and relationship. Right? Really nurture that relationship there and discover what you can do for others. So give, give, give before you get. So even if you think you are a job seeker, there are still ways that you can add value, whether it's sharing your expertise or referring others, uh, whatever that is. It can be said something so small that could make a huge difference. As simple as I'll give you an example, let's just say a recruiter reached out to you and the opportunity is not a good fit. But if you can prefer, let's say your friend or a colleague, I guarantee you that the recruiter will really appreciate that and will remember you uh, for it there. Second is to seek to understand before to be understood. So when you're reaching out, connect with people in your target area based on what your target is. You're meeting the right people. Focusing first on understanding like their needs, the role, the organization, or the industry. Um, ask for advice, insights, or feedback. So really position it as more like an informational type of meeting before asking for any favors uh, there. One of the common mistakes I see is that people ask for favors before building that trust and rapport and relationship, and that will never work. So it's so important to nurture that relationship before you ask for help. Once you take the time to really understand this, that's when you can promote yourself, share your story, accomplishments, and unique value. Be clear on what you're looking for so they can actually think of someone or an opportunity to refer you to, and make sure to tailor your messages to your audience needs as well. So these are just some of the guiding principles there to help you get started with networking effectively. Now that we talked about networking, let's move into uh, LinkedIn here. I know Bob's gonna talk a little bit more around like content and keywords. What I wanna share here is from a recruiter's perspective, what are the key things you wanna keep in mind to make an outstanding LinkedIn profile? So the strategy here is you wanna have optimized with keywords to be searchable, okay? I've been using LinkedIn at least over 10 years now, and uh, over 90% of the recruiters use LinkedIn to find talent. Um, when I was at Google, I only hired one person through online application. Everyone else was through a proactive outreach through LinkedIn or through some sort of a referral there. So as um, the job seeker or the one who's seeking opportunities here, these are things you wanna keep in mind. Number one is to have a sharp professional picture, right? So this is that professional image or your brand, the first thing that someone sees when they're searching. Next is you wanna have a catchy and keyword rich tagline, right? So this is a tagline that will help you get found. I recommend when you think of as a recruiter, people typically tend to search by job titles, then functional keywords, um, and then adding what I call your value prop statement there, the impact statement. So for example, let's say your title is marketing manager, and you specialize in the B2B space. And within that, you on expertise that is digital marketing or content marketing. Those are the keywords that you wanna include in there because a recruiter will look for those. Next is you wanna have an authentic and tailored bio summary. So this is a great way to stand out. Most of the times, most people don't even have a bio summary or just have like a short um, sentence that summarizes like 10 years experience in this and that's it. Um, I wanna encourage you here to really add some personality here. 
right? Really showcase who you are, what you're proud of, and what value that you have offer, have to offer here. Like keep it to your top three unique selling points. Next is the progressive work experience. You know, the key here is you want to showcase that you've progressed in your career. Um, you take on bigger scope, um, or if you had promotions, showcase that as well as a great as that's a great way to showcase how you've grown in your career and and also the expertise that you have there. Next is the identify your top relevant skills. So this is um, a piece I find a lot of people tend to neglect, um, but it's a great way to help with the LinkedIn algorithm to get found there. So right now, uh, LinkedIn has this ability where you can identify up to 50 skills, but you can pin your top three skills there. So I recommend identify what are those top three skills that you want to be known for and to be uh, searched for as well. Next is the target industry and location. Now, this may sound simple, but as a recruiter, for me to look for profiles, typically I do narrow it by industry and location. So if you tend, if you're thinking of relocating or you wanna change industries, I actually recommend that you put in that location that you're targeting and the industry that you're targeting. And in your bio summary, you can actually indicate that you are looking to pivot into a different industry and um, uh, relocating in a different city as well. And lastly is to get recommendations. So this is that social proof to increase your uh, credibility. I recommend getting at least three. Um, you know, ask like your former boss or colleague or your clients. It's a great way to uh, build that social proof there. So for me, like I have at least 100 recommendations on LinkedIn. And this is through over the years as a speaker. Every time I go out and people connect with me, I'll ask them if they could write a recommendation or the clients who are comfortable putting it on there as well. I also ask them to uh, put a recommendation there. All right, so lastly is the magnify your marketability framework. This is my signature framework that I walk on my clients through when we work together one-on-one. -on -one. And I wanna share with you this because this is a great way to help you think about how can I manage my career proactively um, as I either you're looking for opportunities or you're thinking about what's next. This is like the five D's framework that I walk clients through here. The first is discovering your essence. So this is really that career clarity, that foundation. Think of like life coaching, really digging deep in terms of who you are, what you want, what's important to you. This is the foundation. When you have clarity, you come, uh, once you have that clarity with your direction, you come across more confident in talking about what you want. And as a result, you become more compelling. So this is that foundation work to do first. If you're not sure, what's next? Next is defining your personal brand. This is all about what makes you unique and markable. What's your competitive edge, right? This is all about marketing now. The next piece here is about determining the marketing need. So this is the external research you wanna do, understanding like what are the trends, challenges, and opportunities? Um, what does it take to succeed in this role? What are employers looking for? Identifying those keywords or key phrases that they use and so that you can tailor your content to their needs as well. Next is the developing your marketing plan. So this is the game plan for your job search or networking uh, to help you generate opportunities. Like what kind of companies do I wanna target? Who do I wanna target? Um, who are the right kind of people that will help me get in the foot in the door there? And lastly is to deliver your message. So this is all about the content piece around your resume, LinkedIn profile, cover letter, elevator pitch, interview prep. You want to make sure everything is consistent and compelling across the board that will make you stand out. Okay, So this is the framework that I want you to take it when you think about um, how to really sell yourself effectively. It actually all starts from within and knowing yourself. All right. So if you want some more help to differentiate and get hired, I encourage you to visit my website, www.mymarkley.com. Or if you'd like to get some additional one-on-one -on -one help, feel free to book a free call with me at mymarkley.com slash forward slash call. Okay. And my final saying here is, um, it's my favorite saying is that um, own your greatness, stand out to get hired, right? When you own your greatness of what you're really good at, that's how you're really going to amplify uh, your personal brand to attract more opportunities. So thank you so much uh, for watching. And I'm going to open the floor up to other questions and I'll let uh, Bob take over here. That's great, Diana. Thank you. That was that was a that was a lot of amazing value that we provided there. I am humble enough to admit that even I picked up a couple things. So that's always great. Um, we actually we actually had two questions, but you answered one on right on your slide, so it was great. Roger is happy with that. But um, now I'm hoping I'm saying their name right. Uh, I see it as Gotham. Gotham is asking your opinion on reaching out to someone via LinkedIn uh, in a company. Um, where they're looking for a job or an opportunity, even if you don't know them. What's your sort of take on that? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I guess I see here, like the same like, and we send the email CEO, CEO yeah. here. You know what? It's yes. One of the things I always recommend from, from that point of view is start off um, when you're just starting off, get your feet wet uh -huh. by networking with people at the peer level before reaching out to the recruiters or the executives and CEOs, right? Because what's that's going to happen is that's going to build your confidence. Uh, the other thing is it's going to get you more prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I definitely recommend that, but you want to be strategic and prepare so you're not wasting your time. Mm -hmm. When you're reaching out to that executive level, VP level, um, it has to be more a pitch message. Or if you're at the level at that C level already, um, think of it as like a business consultation of really understanding their strategic priorities and needs mm -hmm. as that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you want to nurture the relationship to think about you know, as you're continuing to nurture that, how can I uncover opportunities for them or what can I do for them to help yeah. their business grow and succeed? That's amazing. Thank you, Diana. Um, that, believe it or not, that's the only two questions that we have, but I know that you <laughs> and I have said if people have questions at the end, when I'm done, we're actually still going to have some time to answer some more questions. So um, since I don't see any more, Diana, I'm, I think I'm going to jump in if that's okay. Yeah, and then please do. Over, and we are like right on schedule, which I love. I'm that's so crazy. happy. I know. I always want to make sure we respect people's time. So that's great. Um, so I'm going to kick up my presentation. And Diana, I hope you don't mind. In the middle of yours, I did a couple polls. So we can definitely talk about that at the end, uh, mm -hmm. which is great. Let me make sure I... Oh, I got ahead of myself. First, I need to share my screen. <laughs> and then I'm going to present. Can everybody see, Diana, can every, oh, I've already gone to the end. Diana, can everyone see my presentation starting from here? <laughs> yes, I can. It looks good. Thank you. All right, I'll mute myself thank here. You. No one, no worries. Thank you. So uh, as with Diana's presentation, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to throw it in the chat window. And at the end, I'm happy to address them. And then we're going to have some time to talk about um, both myself and Diana's presentation as a whole. My goal for you guys today is I really want to move you through this idea of how do you get found as that expert online. So my expertise um, when I talk to people about what it is that I do is this idea of, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for 17 years and my claim to fame is in 2008, I actually scaled uh, my first business to 250K in the first year. So by 2020 numbers, that's not very impressive. But for those of us that remember 2008, I actually did that entire scaling without any ads or any any marketing. Most of it, pretty much all of it, was done by developing my expert brand online, which was still fairly infinite uh, in its infancy when it comes to social media, but also just developing the right relationships and being that person that people could find based on what it is I do. So what I'm gonna talk about today is, is how you yourself can position yourself that way online, which is my, my favorite part of the process of, of becoming an expert. So I'm gonna go back a slide and talk about what I'd like for you guys to get for today. We're gonna to definitely continue on Diana's theme around marketability, visibility, and credibility. And we're gonna talk about, you know, how to identify your marketability by audience and niche when it comes to being found online. We're then gonna talk about building your visibility uh, through web and social, continuing on some of the, the amazing tips that Diana has shared as well, and then talk about establishing that credibility. So it's one thing to be visible, but for people to actually associate you with that expertise is also another component of what we'll talk about today. So the first one comes around this idea of marketability. So again, continuing on Diana's ideals around, you know, how do you really understand who you are and what it is that you want to do? It really is this concept of what is your brand? So, you know, when you think about who you are as a person and your core values, these all inform your professional expertise status. So when you say to me, well, Bob, you know, I'm a, I'm a goofy guy at home, but, you know, in the professional world, I'm very suit and tie. I'm going to actually challenge you to say that you might find a disconnect in your brand. It really is hard for many of us, unless you're an amazing actor, it really is hard for many of us to hide who we are. So when you think about developing your personal brand, whether through a career perspective or an entrepreneurial perspective, honor that and understand what that, what are your core values? How are you known by people? A really cool tip to find out what your brand is if you feel like you're not really sure yourself is ask 10 people that you deal with on a regular basis, whether you're a coworker, if you're brave enough, whether you're a manager, or even asking family and friends, how do you see me? How do you define me? What's one or two words that come to your mind when you think of me? And that personal brand is the first thing we really, I'm saying personal, personal professional brand is that first step we really need to get together before we start showcasing our expertise. Because I'm gonna share with you something that's really interesting 
um, in, in 2020 right now. Your expertise brand is not about knowledge anymore. Gone are the days when you could just be really good at a subject and you would be that expert person. We are in a very competitive landscape when it comes to knowledge and a very competitive work landscape as well. So your brand now has taken on these components of who you are as a person or as an employee or as, as an entrepreneur. So really reflect and understand what your brand is. Again, ask those questions, understand your core values. When you feel like you have a sense of that, of who that brand is, like for example, who would Bob be? The next thing we want to talk about when it comes to marketability is understand your audience. And in that, understand the demographics and psychographics of the people who will understand your expertise. So let me clarify that a little bit. Certainly you could be the most knowledgeable person when it comes to financial literacy for young people. You could say, Bob, when it comes to young people, I am the person that people bring in to speak, or I am the person that my company sends out to talk about it. That's great, but really understand who your demographics and psychographics are more than just young people, right? You know, are they youth at risks? Are they young people that are entering university? Really get into those statistical characteristics of who defines the people in your audience. Imagine you're on a stage, who is, who is sitting in front of you? Who are those people around you? Who are the people that are calling you or emailing you to say, hey, could we get you on our stage? Could we get you to do a workshop at our conference? And when you start to really break down those demographics, you'll start to notice that you're really honing in on some sort of message, which we're gonna talk about shortly. I'm gonna give you a little tip about demographics and psychographics. As I had said in their personal brand, the, the, it is generally a reflection of you. It is really difficult to try and talk to someone that you don't understand or can't relate to. You know, if you uh, have always spent all your years in the restaurant industry and now you're trying to become an expert in manufacturing, you know, it, it is difficult to make that relatability happen. So, you know, when you figure out what your brand is, look for demographics and psychographics that are reflective of you, but also again, of that audience you wanna to talk to. I'm gonna throw in a third concept there, which is really cool. It's something I've been adding more and more lately, is this concept of value graphics. And value graphics really talks about those polarizing concepts of a personality. So it's usually based around culture or religion, or it might be a relate, uh, related around politics. Now, I, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is we never, I shouldn't say never, generally we don't like to talk about religion or politics when we talk about uh, concepts or, or topics online. It is a very slippery slope. But when you're defining who your audience is, you may realize that your expertise or your knowledge or who you are as an expert comes across more to a liberal audience than a conservative audience. So be aware of that value graphic as well. The other thing when we talk about what is your brand and those demographics, psychographics, and value graphics is I want you, I want you to continue to dig deeper. And so when I talk about niche, Niche really isn't just a business topic anymore. Niche is who is it of that demographic and psychographic that you really, really want to connect with? So earlier I'd used the example of being an expert in financial literacy for young people. And then I'd asked you to start thinking about the demographics, which is, are they college level young people? Are they high school young people? And then the psychographics, uh, are these people that grew up in an urban center or a much more rural community? Now as you get into niche, continue to dig deeper. What are the struggles and pains that these communities have that you want in your that you have in your audience? What is it that they really, really want or need to know? And as you continue to break down a niche, you start asking yourself, okay, if these are college level young people, are they college level young people that go to school in the US or in Canada? Because you're going to find post-secondary in both those areas are very different. Are they uh, young people who go to second uh, post-secondary uh, overseas? So as you start to get into your niche, you really start to understand what topics, what pains, and what visions your audience is going to have and how your expertise relates to that. And as you start to really build that surrounding audience and that surrounding community, certainly as you evolve in your expertise brand, you'll start to add more and more people to it. But in the beginning, try and be as hyper-focused as you can on this community because it's this community that will help you find uh, help you understand what your value, what your expertise value is in this market. When we talk about visibility, so we've now determined, okay, our marketability, or for lack of a, a better way to think about it is, what's our value in the market, our expertise value? Now we talk about visibility. So once we understand this is what my audience wants, how do I get to them? How do I show them that not only do I have this expertise, 
but I have solutions that could help them or that we can have conversations that help help them thrive. And so visibility comes purely out of content. This idea of what are you talking about online or even offline? See, content doesn't just have to be a social media post. Content can be a speaking gig. It could be a workshop. Content could be a book, a printed book. So what are those, uh, what are those assets that you can use online, but also offline when it comes to talking about content? So are you creating social media posts? Are you writing blogs? Are you creating infographics? These are all online assets, but consider offline as well. Are you writing a book? Are you speaking? And then, you know, sh um, melding those offline assets online as well, because to, to grow your visibility offline is it's a bit of a harder, uh, a harder push. You are going to have to talk to more people and spend more physical time in places. When you build your assets online, offline is still important. Online allows you to gain much more visibility faster as long as you're talking to the right audience in the right niche. More people start to comment, more people start to share, more people start asking you for further advice. And when people say to me, well, Bob, how do I know what content to build? Well, that's your expertise, right? What do people want to know about what you're an expert in? I'm going to give you a really cool free little tool that I use that I love because as much as an expert I am, sometimes I struggle with what should I talk about today. There's a website called answerthepublic.com. So answerthepublic.com, really amazing website. And if you're not sure if you've gotten the right website, when you go there, there will be an interactive video of a person staring at you. So that's how you know you've reached the right place. On the bottom, there'll be a search bar. Put in the word that describes your expertise, whether it's financial literacy, whether it's career coaching, put that in. And what that will do is that will create an entire spreadsheet online of everything people are, are asking or looking for when it comes to that level of expertise. So not only are you asking, or not only are you learning what it is that people are asking about online, you are now actually realizing how does my expertise gear towards that? So one free tip there, feel free to use it as much as you want. The other component, uh, and sorry, I do want to share this little tip because as Diana was talking about LinkedIn and I was just talking about online and offline assets, um, when it comes to LinkedIn, I want to leave this tip sheet here for you guys to take a snapshot of, take a picture of, or again, we are going to be sharing the recording so you can come back to this slide. When you are creating this content, you've gone to answerthepublic.com, you've written a, a post, a comment, a blog, whatever it is your content's going to be. But now when you release it online, what's the best way to get the most visibility in the shortest time? Hootsuite actually just did a study on when the best time to get traction online is when it comes to LinkedIn. So take a look at this, this um, uh, slide here. You can tell by the times and by the type of audience you're looking for um, when the best time to post is. So when I say audience, when I write B2B, for those of you who aren't familiar, that basically means business to business. Are, is your expertise something that's going to help other businesses, whether owners, CEOs, boards, nonprofits? Is that where your expertise lands itself? Or is your expertise more on a consumer level, which is B2C? Is what you, does what you have in expertise relate to an individual person? So a B2B brand might be something along the lines of team training. You might have an amazing expertise and series of knowledge around training teams and motivating teams. That would be B2B. Or you might be an amazing expert when it comes to the beauty space. You might be someone that really understand what it come, what everything that surrounds the idea of cosmetology. That would ideally be the consumer. So as you're developing your content and you figured out your niche and you're posting it basically on LinkedIn, these are the best times to do that in. And as we continue to talk about visibility, one thing that tends to happen is we have knowledge and we have gifts of knowledge and, and so much to share. We just verbal vomit it, or if you will, we write it out and we put it out there and that's great. But you re really want to take a crafted approach to what it is you're putting out there. So certainly we're going to put out your knowledge. We're going to put out your knowledge that's based on the audience and niche that we figured out works for you. But when you're using tools like answerthepublic.com, you're also going to learn that there are certain keywords or key phrases that your audience is continually using. This is really valuable to use on LinkedIn because of course, as people are looking for these concepts or, or articles, you're gonna come up, but it's really important if you're doing it on a website or on a guest blog because Google loves keywords and key phrases. With the most recent Google algorithm, it's not just about keywords anymore. And that's why I've included key phrases. What are the sentences? What are the conversations? What are the titles that your audience is looking for? I'm gonna give you another free tip because I love free tips. 
So you may say to me, well, Bob, you know, I, I, I know what it is that my knowledge is and I know what people are asking, but they're asking a lot. I'm not sure specifically what it is that I can break down into keywords or key phrases. So this is a little hack that I love to use. If I know, for example, that uh, I'm a realtor, let's say I'm a realtor and I know that I'm an expert in finding new couples their first home. Let's say, you know, and, and you could continue to niche in on that, but let's say that's my thing. What I would do is I would actually look for conferences around real estate or conferences around investment properties and look for what are the titles of subjects that are being talked about? What are the workshop titles? What are the keynote titles? Because you understand that these events, when they're putting on these workshops and keynotes, they're researching what it is that their audience or attendees need to know when it comes to this particular audience and niche. So if you're trying to figure out what those keywords and key phrases are, look at conferences that are very popular and very successful. What are the titles of their key work, of their workshops or what are the titles of their keynotes? Those start to make, really make great uh, examples of keywords and key phrases. And of course, when all else fails, ask people, ask your audience. If you wanted to find someone that knows what I know, what would you put into Google, right? So another key free, uh, free key tip there for you guys to use as well. Just being mindful of time. When it comes to establishing your credibility, the other component that's important is you've now spent this time and really cultivated your personal brand. You've now spent this time to develop content online and some offline to really get that visibility out there. But now we need to really establish your credibility. Now, if you remember, for those of us that are of my generation, when social media started, one of the biggest proponents of its success was this idea of credibility and validity. Things worked in social media networks because someone else said they liked it. When someone liked, I'm a big fan of Corthodary ice cream, but I'll tell you for me to get started into Corthodary ice cream, someone told me that they liked Corthodary ice cream and how amazing it was. Someone val validated uh, and established, established that credibility for that brand. So you need to hit that establishment as well and that credibility. So when you're starting out, you've probably already got some credibility in terms of LinkedIn recommendations, which Diana mentioned earlier. Definitely, definitely you want those. But look for other people or experts within your industry, within your niche, within your audience who are talking about similar subjects to you. And if they've got websites or podcasts or any other ways, uh, or, or they're doing social posts on LinkedIn as well, participate engage connect with these people if they're doing a linkedin post on a similar subject or on a subject that you love that's based on your expertise engage in that content comment on it add your two cents share it don't hide it share it within your network and say this is amazing and this is sort of my take on this content and when you start doing that and establishing that credibility using other people's content they in turn you will find we'll do the same thing. They'll start sharing your content and they'll start engaging in your content. And if we just focus on LinkedIn for the purposes of this webinar, if you think about it, LinkedIn loves that stuff when it comes to the algorithm and they see that you're being shared by other people who may have a larger network or more established credible network, LinkedIn gives you more juice and that lets you get found more, li more likely on LinkedIn for those keywords and key phrases I mentioned earlier. And then of course, establishing your credibility, guest blogs and podcasts, which I kind of gave away in the other slide. Who are the experts in your industry that have podcasts? Who are the experts that have websites and that are blogging? Look for industry periodicals. In the old days, all of our industries had particular magazines. So the, you'll find a lot of those magazines will likely have online periodicals. Can you give something to that publication? Can you say, hey, I'd love to do a guest blog on your publication based on what I know because I work in this industry. And the best part about it is if you're employed somewhere, if you work somewhere, you can still do this because really all you're doing is sharing knowledge as long as you're obviously not sharing proprietary knowledge of where you work. But if you're sharing the knowledge that you have, you're putting it out there, people are seeing you as that expert. And that actually benefits where you work because then they're gaining more visibility because more people are looking at you as well. So look for those guest opportunities. Where can you share your knowledge? And again, it establishes your credibility because they've asked you to participate or you've offered to participate instant credibility. Here's how I want to sum up. So hopefully, yeah, we're still doing good on time. Here's how I wanted to sum up. The only way what Diana and I are talking about today that it's going to work for any of you that are listening right now is you need to be consistent and you need to commit to that consistency. I usually encourage anyone who wants to be found as that expert online or who wants to find amazing career opportunities like Diana talks about, you need to commit to your brand, your personal or professional brand 
to at least two to three hours a week. What are you writing on LinkedIn? What are you sharing? Who are you connecting with? Who are you talking to? That consistent uh, commitment is what really allows you to establish that credible, um, being seen as that cr credible expert on LinkedIn or on most social networks or even on Google itself. So for you to get the most out of this webinar, being present, that was great. I appreciate it, but you need to commit to consistency. I find a lot of people come to myself and I don't know if Diana's experienced this as well. For two reasons, number one, they've been let go or number two, they've had an FTE event. I'm sure you can imagine what the F stands for. <laughs> so they've just said, forget this. The, I need to move on. And then they look for opportunities. But if you consistently invest in your personal or professional brand, both through Diana's channels and doing what I'm suggesting online, you'll find that opportunities will actually start coming to you. And, and really, isn't that what we all want? So um, we are going to take questions, but I just wanted to make sure my information was up there. I always put, just do one thing. If Diana and I have shared a lot of stuff here and you're kind of processing it, all I'm going to ask you guys, is, or you folks, is to do one thing that we've talked about today commit to that one thing and just enjoy the results that will come to committing to that. Thank you guys. That's uh, all I have in my presentation here. Um, I'm just going to come back and, and, and see if, uh, Diana, how was that? I'm looking for validation. It was Diana. great. It was great. <laughs> amazing. I, I loved, loved it. it. Thank uh, you. It was great. I, I, I actually, I, I was just commenting that I'm going to start posting Monday, Wednesdays at like 745, 1045, 1245. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to see how the results go there. I'm going to, I'm going to give that a try. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Hootsuite is a social media platform that schedules posts for you. So you can use it for free with your LinkedIn channel. But know that this data comes from Canada and the US. Hootsuite is a Vancouver-based company. And so uh, it's, it's great data to use, especially in North America. If you're overseas, you might find this data a little bit skewed. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. So through, there was a question from uh, Celine here. There was a website yeah. that you mentioned earlier. What, what's the website? Uh, publicity? Not sure, I'm sure gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to throw it. So it's answer. I'm going to yeah. throw it in the comments as well. Answer the public dot com so answer the public dot com so i've thrown it in the chat but Perfect. it's a it's, it's an amazing website to really garner what are people asking about so diana you and i we know that we're experts in what we do but sometimes mm -hmm. we get so caught up in what we love to do we don't realize what people are asking that we should be talking about so yeah. you know i'll give you an example i had someone come to me the other day and they are an event planner logistics coordinator and they do events all over North America, Canada, and the US. And they were talking a lot about, you know, experiences and team building. And what they avoided, what they weren't talking about is when they used answerthepublic.com is people are asking about travel and the coronavirus. People are asking about how is this impacting? Should I attend this event? And they realized they needed to start building content for event planners around how to manage that. How do you manage yeah. it? So answer the public sometimes gives us content, Diana, that we've never even thought to chat about in our expertise. That's so that's a great one just to, yeah. to find insight. I actually have been uh, for me um, lately when I write posts and I want to get some inspiration ideas, mm -hmm. I'll just do a Google search. Like, for example, like I was like, I wrote the other day, like, how to position yourself for success. Yes. And what came up was how to position yourself as an expert, how to position yeah. yourself as a thought leader, how to position yeah. yourself for promotion. Absolutely. And that just gave me ideas of, of writing. Yeah. Well too. And I love so, that technique because what I'll sometimes suggest people do is I love that they use Google, but then a lot of people don't realize that the Yahoo search engine and the Bing search engine tend to use slightly different algorithms. So sometimes using all three of those search engines gives you different results. So oh. it's kind of neat to see what people are talking about on Yahoo when it comes to positioning yourself. So that right. even gives you more aspect to content. Yeah. Another tip that I've been sharing with some of my, some of my clients that look what to write like on LinkedIn is um, just look up hashtags, right? The popular yeah. hashtags in their field and just click on that hashtag. For example, one of my clients is uh, really passionate about sustainability, um, alternative energy. And I told her, look it up and just read some of the posts. Like, what are people talking about? What are they commenting to give her ideas of what she could write about as well? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that makes so a lot of sense. Yeah. We have a question here from, let me see here. Helen from asks, if yeah. you aren't committed to daily activity on LinkedIn, is it still valuable to have a profile? I've been focusing on Facebook and IG right now, Instagram. That's a great, great question, Helen. And I think in this in this webinar, we've talked a lot about LinkedIn because we're so focused on that career corporate market. But certainly if you know your audience and your niche is going to be found on Facebook and Instagram, I would actually encourage you to continue to focus there. A LinkedIn profile that's left abandoned actually does worse because what will happen is you may have 
keywords or key components in there that you've put in some time ago and people find it and don't see any activity. And, and first of all, wonder if you're even still doing it. But number two, they maybe try and connect with you. And because you're not on that platform, you tend to, uh, you miss those opportunities. So um, if, you, if you are going to have a LinkedIn account set up, I would ensure that in its messaging, that it says to people, the best way to reach me is this. So mm -hmm. it may be a direct phone number, it may be direct email, but if you're not posting regular updates because your audience is not there, that's okay. You're not getting the most out of that platform because your audience is not there, but make sure that it's not something you completely ignore. Another trick, make sure that you've enabled email notifications. So if for some reason, someone does message you, tag you or address you on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. at least you get that email notification to go visit and say, hey, Diana, I'm not really here often. Can we connect on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I wonder, Helen, if you are, if you have your own business or um, if you're a corporate professional, because I, I have two different point of views here. If, if I think that if you are a, a corporate professional, mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn is a great platform because it's it's the largest, world's largest a professional uh, network to do business. Right. Right. Um, so if, if you have your own business and your audience is on Instagram and Facebook, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely focus on that like i know for me i i don't have a huge i'm just getting on instagram right now i would say <laughs> <laughs> i'm just learning how to properly use it yeah. um but i've been focused on linkedin because that's where my audience is so those are going back to question like who's your audience where did yeah. they hang out yes where yeah. do they hang out? where do they spend time and that's going to determine where you want to spend invest your time in mm -hmm. um, publishing content you're absolutely right because it can be overwhelming to try and be on six or seven platforms. <laughs> and yeah. if you're if you're if you're spreading yourself so thin, you're killing so much time. You're not giving it your best. So you've got a great point, Diana. Really try and pick one, maybe two platforms, to really uh, focus your content on for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I'm curious to know for those who are here with us, I'm I'm really curious. Um, What's your biggest takeaway like so far like from, from this webinar today? Like what were the, some ahas or what are some things that you really want to to try out try out there? Perfect. I'm gonna just take Tanya's question and then we're gonna do that if that's yeah. okay. So yeah. I know that Tanya asked, uh, oops, I lost it. There we go. Um, what is it you oh it keeps going, that's good. Um, what was it you recommended to ask friends and colleagues? Okay. So when it comes to really defining your personal brand or or whom you are, who you are. Um, you really want to ask them, what what do they think about you? So when someone says Bob Minhas, what are the first one or two or three words that come to their mind? And this could go both ways. <laughs> but at the very least, you know what your, your coworkers, colleagues, family, and friends are, are uh, think of you as. Because sometimes we struggle to see the forest from the trees. Sometimes, and I say this a lot, you know, Diana, I don't know if you experienced this, but as Canadians, we suffer from this horrible disease called humility. And so because of that, we tend not to look at our gifts and our strengths. So someone might say, well, Bob, when I think of you, I think of this. And it's like, I never thought of that. That really fits into what I need or I'd like my brand to be. So I just wanted to address that. And That's then, and then yeah. move over to Juliet says, welcome to Instagram, Diana. Juliet's <laughs> welcoming you there. I have a question. I don't know if anyone can answer this for me. I was going to post in public is with Instagram. How do you make sure I feel like you need to add in symbols to make sure the lines of sentences um, that don't lump into one whole paragraph that I, if I want to have space in between paragraphs, do you actually, is there a strategy around that or do you add symbols? I'm not sure. I, I actually need to learn more about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. You and I should totally have this chat. I I'm, I'm, so what I actually do is I create it in a word doc or a Google doc. I type everything out, spaces, hashtags, all that. And then I simply copy and paste it into my Instagram because and this is not really the webinar to share. I know a bit of a hack on how to use Chrome to post on mobile. So I don't always have to use my phone. <laughs> so I need to send you that that little tip I have. It's, it's really cool. Okay. So that way you can space out your, your words accordingly. And then yeah. it literally is a copy and paste into the Instagram window. And then it gets shared. Okay, you know, Jennifer just shared the, the way to do is to use uh, later.com. I'm going to check that out. Thank you oh, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, later.com and Hootsuite's a great way to do it as well. <laughs> so, one thing I want to talk about so, so that question you answered with, um, with the Tanya there about the branding piece. Um, yeah. I actually get all my clients when they work with me to send out a perception survey to at least like 20 people that they know, like yeah. friends or colleagues, and ask mm -hmm. them like the words you use to describe them. How would you describe your leadership style, your communication style? Mm -hmm. um, how do you see yeah. I add value? And it's an eye open exercise for a lot of people because one is either it validates or reinforces what they think. Mm -hmm. um, and if it doesn't, like how do you close that gap? Yeah, that's right? a really great point. Is there yeah. a skill set that you wanna work on to develop that? I know I actually did it in December 
and mm -hmm. I used the Google form because I wanted people to submit anonymously. So I made it so that people could just put it in and I wouldn't know who they are. And it, it was some really, really informative stuff. It was really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great exercise uh, to do that. So that's great yeah. there. And uh, I think Celine had a question. Uh, I tried to reach out to people on LinkedIn, send them emails on LinkedIn. They view my profile, but don't accept my invitation. I can't reach out to them ever since. What should I do? Diana, do you want to take this on? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So <clears throat> so here's, I think uh, one is if you just reached out to them by, <laughs> give me one sec. Yeah. No worries. We've been talking a lot. I think Diana's getting parched. There we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I relaxed. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, if you just reached out to them, uh, if you're trying to follow up with them, the best way is actually if you want to follow up, send it in mail, which means you do need a premium account there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the other way is, I mean, if they don't accept your invitation, it's hard. It's either you try to find out their, what their email address is or you send them uh, in mail. Here's the reality. Yeah. From my, my um, recruiting days experience, um, if you can get 20, 30% response rate is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is not everyone's going to say yes to responding to you. Not everyone's going to say yes to accepting your invites. So for those mm -hmm. who are looking for opportunities, don't give up if you don't get a response. Mm -hmm. From my experience, most people do not reach out to enough people. Mm -hmm. They only reach out to maybe just a handful. And the yeah. challenge I always give people is to have a list of at least 100 people yes. to reach out to. Yeah. Prioritize how you want to reach out mm -hmm. to them, maybe like 10 a week so that you're not overwhelmed with it. And, and that way you can tweak your messages along the way there. Um, the reality is it's okay. Like not everyone's going to respond. Like when I was, a, I'll give you a, a little insight here. When I was a recruiter at Google, I had over a 90% response rate. When I started recruiting for agency as a recruiter, um, like a smaller name, smaller companies, I only about 30, 40% response rate. Yeah. yeah. So that's just the reality here. So I kind of look at that. I tell my clients who are job seekers, you got to look at it from that perspective as well. Mm -hmm. so you just give up after like you know the first no or the first like um no response mm -hmm. i love that that's a really great point and then just to add to that diana uh i think what you really want to be cognizant of is there's two main things here so the people that you're reaching out to um is there value for them to connect to you so you know i'm sure a lot of people are being afraid of maybe being spammed or or perhaps getting a, 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 a message they're not welcoming so you know when you craft uh, when you send a request and you can add a note, really be mindful in that note. How are you crafting why you want to make the connection? Is yeah. the idea that you're looking for an opportunity from them? Probably don't say that. You know, if you were to say something along the lines of, hey, Diana. In fact, I think this is how Diana and I connected as I found her and I said, hey, Diana, I love what you do. This is yeah. what I do. And I feel like you and I would have some really cool synergies. Would you be open to a chat? So I didn't do yeah. that in the message. I did that in the note. Because I, I want her to decide right away if I even connect with this person or not. Yeah. And so sometimes it's, and I, and I think, Diana, to be fair, that is part of what you do as well in your consulting, is you can mm -hmm. help people really understand how to craft those messages, right? Yeah, how to yeah. craft that message, how to follow up as well. Um, yeah. I was just saying, like, when you were sharing earlier, but comment, commenting on people's posts, I have mm -hmm. found actually the content, the people that I like enjoy following content, I would comment on it. Mm -hmm. And if I really like it, I actually take it to the inbox and I say like, hey, like acknowledge, I say I'm a big fan of acknowledging people's yes. uh, work, um, what you appreciate about them, what you're learning. Mm -hmm. And then ask them like, hey, I would love to get to know you more. Would you like to have a chat? Mm -hmm. um, and I have been building relationship with other, like other experts as well. Yes. Um, identify opportunities there. And, and that's the same if you are a, a job seeker, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe, the recruiters may not be sharing content, but maybe you can share some things that you learn about their industry, their company, mm -hmm. what's interesting about it. Mm -hmm. Start from the place of curiosity versus yes. thinking that they need to get you an opportunity. Yes, that's amazing. That's gold. So in everything I talk about and you talk about, it does come from a place of curiosity. Ask the yeah. right questions, really pay attention to the answers and really process it. it you know, gone are the days of zeros and ones. If I do this, I will get this. Yeah. We're in a very relationship driven economy. So they made a really good point there. Yeah, that's true. So let's look at some of the key learnings here. Yes. So Sarah said, biggest takeaway, people see you as an expert when you share your knowledge. It doesn't have to be earth shattering. Just keep the conversation going. Yes, that is amazing because you're right. It doesn't have to be this huge aha. Sometimes it's a validation that people are thinking, you know what? I did think that, but now I know for sure. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And that's a very interesting. This is part of I see as almost like that self-worth and self-value that um, when we say expert, it doesn't mean that you have to have know everything, but if you have something great to share or value to share, yes. share that, 
right? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are asking about my Instagram trick. So yes, please reach out and I will totally, Jennifer, I will let you know how I do it. Um, one of the key ways to connect with people on LinkedIn is to add a personal note. This adds value and a reason for them to want to connect. Otherwise, it can feel like an IG follow to connect just for the sake of connecting. Make it worth their while. Why should they accept our invitation? Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, absolutely. Personalize it and tailor it, right? Yeah. And this is how you're going to stand out at the end of the day. Like, Make mm -hmm. it unique and tailor it uh, as well. And absolutely. I can tell you, Diana, I don't know if you experienced this. I've had this a few times at events in Toronto where I've connected with people and uh, in the past, before I had this epiphany of, I need to be a better person, <laughs> I would just connect with people, go to events, and they'd say, Bob, we're connected on LinkedIn. And I froze because I, I was thinking, I can't remember this person. I don't know. Anything. But when you <laughs> spent that time cultivating the relationships, when you show up at an event, not only yeah. can I remember that person, but I'll say, Diana, I just saw that post the other day. It was great. My goodness, the rapport, it just it, it gets you leaps and bounds ahead of other job seekers and other recruiters. For because sure. You've invested that time for sure. You're absolutely right. And I'm going to tell you something. What I've seen as a speaker as well, um, really rarely do actually people follow up. And this is mm -hmm. a great strategy to stand out. Like I'll give you an example. Like, you know, for example, like I many years ago I spoke at to like engineering students, like hundreds mm -hmm. of them were there. And I remember there was this this uh, this guy that came in and was like, Oh my god, are you the Diana Chan? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> are you the Diana Jan? And he was so pumped up, so excited about it. Yeah. And after the talk, he wrote me a personalized email. And I still remember him to this day. He's on my Facebook, which I usually don't accept people mm -hmm. I don't know from face on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a great way to stand out. And I had another student, um, an HR conference. Um, he also uh, did a personal follow-up. And as a result, I became his mentor. I referred him to wow. an internship opportunity in HR, where he got like the first ever internship opportunity in recruiting. And that's a great to me. I think it's really like hack. If you're willing to actually follow up, develop a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's no promises, but like you know, the thing is, not a lot of people actually do that. You're and right. when you do, um, it really showcases your eagerness, take initiative, mm -hmm. um, being proactive, um, really curious, of really learning about a new industry, a new area. There. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right for sure. I just want to be mindful of time. I know we're a bit over. So I, I don't see any more questions, Diana. So I'm wondering if we should thank everybody and yeah. call it a lunch. <laughs> call it a lunch. I know. The lunch you learn here. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Diana, thank you so much for giving your time today. I, I know that I've learned quite a, a lot of cool, real things from you, and I appreciate it. And, uh, and thank you to everyone who logged on and spent the time with us today. We really appreciate you dedicating your time to getting yourself ahead in your a career and in your expertise brand. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Please connect with us on uh, yeah. LinkedIn or through our website. We'll love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.